This is the most deluded and defensive owner to have ever been on Kitchen Nightmares. But what he did to Chef Ramsay is unforgivable. And I'm not scared of you. What's that supposed to mean? You threatening me? Now I know the problem in this restaurant. In this episode of the show, Chef Ramsay headed over to Long Beach, California to visit a restaurant as old as time. The business, called Nino's Italian Restaurant, started way back in 1958. And at the time of filming, it was 54 years old. That's a really long time to keep a place running. So what exactly went wrong after several decades of getting things right? Well, this Italian restaurant was run by a couple named Inga and Vincenzo Cristiano. While Vincenzo oversaw the kitchen, Inga managed the front of house. When they arrived in America, it was Vincenzo's dream to open a restaurant and Inga was ready to support him. Things took off almost immediately and the business was booming. But there was a shift in management when something really unexpected happened. Vincenzo started showing signs of dementia, which is a neuropsychological issue that comes with old age. But did I forget to mention how old this man was at the time? Vincenzo was 88 years old, and I think whether he had Alzheimer's or not, it was a good time to retire. The owners then looked towards their children, Nino, Karina, and Michael, to run the business. They joined hands to work at the restaurant, which was a place they had grown up together and shared many cherishable moments. Vincenzo handed over the entire responsibility to his oldest son, Nino. But of course, the other siblings weren't too pleased with this decision. Especially Michael, who claimed that all that Nino did was sit around in his room and watch TV all day. All I can say is, he's the worst employee here. But you know what? Michael was actually doing a favor by bringing up Nino's laziness to the table. Because, well, Nino was a mess. He was stubborn, arrogant, rude, adamant, and I could just keep adding to this list. But I'd fall short in describing this failure of a man. He never really cared about what was happening at the restaurant. That was until it became a really big problem. Nino refused to listen to anyone and didn't take anyone's opinions into consideration. He paid no attention to his brother or sister, who were fed up with his attitude. Karina, the sister, ran the front of house while Michael handled everything in the kitchen. The only thing that Nino did apart from watching TV and wasting time was to argue with the customers that walked in. That's definitely not good for any business, but Nino did it anyway. In one instance, a customer found a strand of hair in their food. And well, Nino's reaction to this valid complaint was the opposite of what customer service should look like. Instead of apologizing and replacing the dish, Nino sparked off into an argument. And you must have put it there. No, I have red, right, dude. I don't have any hair. That's certainly not how you treat a customer. And what makes things even worse is that Nino actually accused the customer of doing something incredibly hideous. Nobody in their right mind would want to come in and dine here again, at least I know I wouldn't. It was time for some serious change, but how could they do that when Nino held the reins? Well, Michael and Karina reached out to their only hope, Chef Ramsay. Except they went behind Nino's back to do this, and to say that he was displeased would be the understatement of the century. That goes to show how desperate the siblings were to save the restaurant, which was now running under Inga's retirement funds. And that's just heartbreaking. After years and years of service, this poor woman couldn't even enjoy her retirement to the fullest. According to Karina, Vincenzo ran the restaurant with an iron fist, and the restaurant was the best it could ever be. But now, only Nino was running the restaurant, and that was the only reason why the business was crumbling. Inga said that Nino was actually listed as one of their employees, and the only reason he was still on the roll was because he was their son. The family firmly believed that Nino would run their legacy into the ground, and they were ready to do anything to save it. The last thing they wanted to do was shut their doors after five decades of being in service. Inga had made a promise to Vincenzo that she'd keep the restaurant running, but for how long? That was the question of the century. Fast forward to when Chef Ramsay arrived at the restaurant, he was almost instantly taken aback when he saw this. God. Well, I feel like I'm back in 1958. The restaurant looked dated, but were their practices dated too? Chef Ramsay was greeted by Inga, and soon enough, the whole family gathered around to meet him. Chef Ramsay got to chat with all of them to figure out what was really going wrong. He asked each of them how they would rate the food, and while they all gave him different answers, the general consensus was that the food was pretty good. But it was now time for Chef Ramsay to put this to the test and let them know exactly what he thought about their service. However, before that, Chef Ramsay got to see a little of Nino's narcissism in person during their discussion. Michael first chipped in and revealed that he actually didn't work at the restaurant full time. This was because he had a separate career, but he always tried to help out when he was needed. 
but Nino boasted about a long list of duties that he diligently did at the restaurant. And while he kept going on and on, the expressions on Michael and Karina's faces were absolutely priceless. Vacuuming, cleaning of all these plates, and cleaning the restroom, scrubbing the toilet. Chef Ramsay easily picked up on the cues and started to grill Nino. Karina then took the opportunity and called him out on his terrible behavior by saying this. Cleaning? What are you talking about? The restaurant is a mess. Chef Ramsay was then told that Nino is never present for the entire day and he doesn't even enter the kitchen. That's probably the most crucial part of the restaurant. One thing led to another from then on and things started to get a little dramatic. All thanks to Michael actually. My brother never tells the truth. Ah, so coming from a pathological liar, I take right. that as a compliment. And how could I forget the most iconic meme worthy moments when Michael imitated Nino by doing this. Like last night he ran up to every table and said, Hello, my name's Nino! But you know what? Behind all of that, it became really clear how frustrated Michael was with his older brother. The discussion ended with all of them bickering over each other, which was finally put to an end by Chef Ramsay. It was now time for him to taste their quote-unquote good food. The first thing that Ramsay notices at any restaurant is the menu. If the menu is convoluted or has way too many items, he could already tell why it's failing. Firstly, Chef Ramsay spotted so many dishes that weren't spelled correctly, even things as basic as meatball and eggplant. Had they paid more attention to the business than each other's problems, they probably would have fixed this minute but very important problem. Finally, Ramsay ordered a chicken piccata, one meatball, yeah, that's exactly how it was on the menu, and an eggplant. While Chef Ramsay waited for his food, Michael happened to stop by. He filled him in on more of Nino's madness by saying this. He complains about not having money, not taking a vacation. Either come here at night or get another job. Nino stepped in and asked Chef Ramsay not to judge him while explaining what his role at the restaurant was. He said that he invested all of his time into cleaning the place, but hold on, hold on, what do we have here? No. Oh my gosh. It looks like Nino missed cleaning the very same spot that Chef Ramsay was seated in. But hey, it wasn't just things under the table. Chef Ramsay discovered more gum, cobwebs, and pockets of dust all over the place, which obviously goes against everything Nino had just been saying. So now you know how much of a cleaner Nino really was. When Chef Ramsay had seen enough, he headed out to give his hands a good rinse, and when he came back, he was in for a little shock. Me cleaning and pulling down all the, all the bottles, every single bottle. Chef Ramsay was visibly perplexed. Who does that? Thankfully, Nino's nonsense seemed to stop once the food made its way to Chef Ramsay's table. However, the food didn't make anything better. The chicken piccata was very slimy and had loads of floury chicken. When Ramsay asked Nino to touch the chicken and feel its texture, he started giving Chef Ramsay a whole big lecture about how it was unhygienic to do so. Chef Ramsay shut up his nonsense and went ahead with trying the one meatball, and this is how he reacted. That tastes 54 years old, mush, disgusting, and just dreadful. When Chef Ramsay shared his feedback with Nino, the man just flipped out. Ask him. I'm not scared of them, and I'm not scared of you. What's that supposed to mean? You threatening me? And do you know why the meatballs were so mushy? Because they were five days old. Now, that looks like the perfect recipe for disaster. The famous chef then decided to confront Nino, who was clearly in denial, and things started to get really heated. Well, then stop sounding like you one. You sound like a fucking idiot yourself. I sound like an idiot. Nino did have a history of being rude to his customers, but being so rude to one of the biggest culinary masters is a totally different thing. Ramsay then called for a family meeting to share his horrible experience, but Nino went back to being Nino yet again. Back to his denial, back to being cocky, and back to being a dick. Chef Ramsay left the family to themselves since they started pointing fingers at each other. They seemed to blame one another for bringing down something their parents had struggled to build for years. Since this place run like crap, this fighting has to stop. Later that evening, Ramsay returned to observe the dinner service. And well, it turned out to be so chaotic that he was left feeling shocked. Upon further inspection of the kitchen, Chef Ramsay found suspicious food that should never be in a kitchen. Instantly, his eyes went towards a lasagna that was rock hard and it was revealed that it was made five days ago. What's more, it was also paired with sauces that were made around the same time. Everything was incredibly stale. He then found a dry and old chicken that was being reheated for the next order. God bless the person who eats something as crappy as that. When Chef Ramsay asked Nino to taste it, the man actually liked it, which shouldn't be too surprising. But Chef Ramsay had to make the right call, so he asked the kitchen staff to throw it away. Because, well, it wouldn't even be safe for a dog. Meanwhile, the dishes that left the kitchen returned back in a flash, which wasn't really too surprising for the famous chef. Customers complained that the food wasn't thawed properly and that the pasta was either too slimy or greasy. But where was Nino through all of this? 
well, he was busy enjoying a break with his parents out back. And when he was in the restaurant, all he did was stand in the corner and watch things like a mannequin. Poor Inga, who was 78 years old, was standing at the counter taking bookings, and he didn't even bother with helping her out. For someone who spoke so much about cleaning, Chef Ramsay wanted to see for himself how Nino maintained the walk-in. And once he was there, he was in for a shock. How old is that to go that color? And I have a feeling if I ask somebody, they'd say, no doubt, from Friday. From unscaled salmon to rotten mushrooms to even portions and portions of spaghetti and water, this place was filthy. Plus, everything seemed to be more than a week old. Chef Ramsay then brought Nino in to show him the filth and how rotten things were. But how did Nino react? Well, he got defensive all over again. It can what? It can go faster than you expect. Chef Ramsay then called him lazy and said that his mom wanted him to run the restaurant, but he wasn't ashamed. Ramsay even pointed out that Nino was 60 years old and did nothing with his father's legacy apart from ruin it. When Nino realized that there was no way out, he started blaming his mother, Inga. Apparently, she was being too controlling and didn't hand over any power to him. But isn't that exactly what Inga did by placing him in charge? What more was he expecting? In fact, she was still working because her 60-year-old son still couldn't take responsibility. Chef Ramsay then came up with a plan to wake Nino up, and what he did was really extreme. When Nino showed up at the restaurant the following day, this is what he found. What's going on? Inga informed him that she was fed up with the restaurant and she was shutting the place down. Meanwhile, Chef Ramsay watched from the sides in hopes that Nino would give them a sign that he actually cared about the restaurant. Nino, initially, was very cool about things and had no real reaction. But when Inga asked him if he was done, this is what he had to say. I don't want to give up. I know we can hold out and do it. Chef Ramsay then met with Michael and Karina too to discuss the plan ahead. He also pointed out how Nino had vowed to take responsibility starting that very day. Although it was hard for them to trust their older brother, they decided to give him another chance in hopes that he could turn things around for the better. Karina told Nino to his face that for a long time, he had ignored his responsibilities and it was time for him to pull things together. Nino said that he knows things aren't good between them, but moving forward, he would like to find a way to be cordial and be a family. I'm asking, let's get out of the past. What is it we can do from this point to move forward? The following day, Chef Ramsay's team gave the restaurant a major renovation. This was definitely needed, considering the fact that it hadn't been done in half a century. White tablecloths and walls had lit up the restaurant, bringing in so much warmth. In one area of the restaurant, there were new lighting fixtures and family-style dining tables. The family was amazed by the developments and adored them all. They were super excited. And well, Nino was actually speechless. Who would have thought? And Karina got emotional seeing how much the place had changed. She gave Chef Ramsay a huge hug and told him that she was eternally grateful for him. This was definitely a dream come true for her. Also, a new rustic themed cuisine was added to go with the venue. To see if Nino would keep to his word, Chef Ramsay assigned him in charge of expediting that evening. The pressure was definitely on in the kitchen. Customers poured into the restaurant after it was reopened and they loved the lighter ambience. The clients were happy since the food was being served consistently and Nino was finally taking charge of the kitchen for a change. But gradually, he began to feel overburdened with the rush. Honestly, that's quite understandable considering how he's never done anything for all of these years. At this point, it was his attitude that would matter the most now. Would he give up or take charge? When the kitchen got backed up with orders, Michael and Chef Ramsay had a quick little chat with Nino. Michael tried to motivate him and smooth things over, but things only got worse since the two began to argue. Chef Ramsay spoke with Michael and encouraged him to calm down, but Michael demonstrated to Chef Ramsay that he was unable to get past everything that just happened before. Once Nino got his bearings and the guests got to enjoy their meals, the evening was deemed a success. Inga said that she couldn't remember the last time Nino had worked so hard. And well, she really hoped that the place would stay open for many more years to come. Thereafter, the family gathered together and everyone was joyous. But Michael left and expressed his disapproval of the relaunch and the changes in general. He said that way too much had changed about the place and it was no longer the original Ninos. Despite the bittersweet ending, they were definitely back in business. After the episode was filmed, a lot of things changed. Michael distanced himself from the restaurant during the following weeks after the episode was filmed. Nino was still the manager and was committed to becoming a more integral part of the restaurant's team. But the business was still being managed by Inga, which is why it was so steady. Karina even made the choice to work longer hours at the restaurant in addition to her regular job. Customers reported that they used the old menu during lunch and the new one for the evening. However, they eventually went back to their original menu entirely. 
After Chef Ramsay's visit, Yelp reviews were pretty inconsistent. There were complaints regarding the delayed service, the burnt pizza bases, and the lasagna, which appeared to have received conflicting reviews. Tragically, Vincenzo Cristiano passed away in 2014. Due to their desire to retire and spend more time with their families, Nino's Italian restaurant eventually closed down in August of 2016. Karina wrote a lengthy, heartfelt message that detailed the legacy of the restaurant, and she finished it by saying, For us, it isn't the same without Dad. My mom is 82 years old, and as a family, we've decided to close the doors and retire this family business. I personally feel it's the right time for us to enjoy more meals and outings together than to work serving meals. The building was sold for a little over $2 million in January of 2017. Now, Inga sadly passed away in 2021. But I hope that the rest of the family made good use of the money that they made and are doing well wherever they are. But there are more deluded owners who were in absolute denial that were featured on Kitchen Nightmares.